So being a special education teacher, it takes on a lot of new roles um, compared to a general education teacher. But when it comes to student personalization, it's one and the same. And when I think of personalization, I think of student ownership. They're taking ownership of their work, of their thoughts, of their actions, and putting it in different forms. And with special education students, they may need more assistance in getting to that ownership. They may need more scaffolding or just more opportunities um, and guidance to get there, but the ultimate thing is they can get there. And so with blended learning, it provides so many opportunities for students to take ownership in their work. And we know that when they have that ownership, they are in. And seeing a student, especially one who may struggle in a certain area, in on a project all out is just so encouraging and so heartwarming and can be used in the future as a reference to be like, hey, remember when you did this and how how did that make you feel? And the work that you did and the knowledge that you showed is just really encouraging, um, especially for our special ed students. And so a couple examples I think of for that personalization and a couple steps that teachers can take are providing um, those choices for students. And choices can be in assessments or choices could be in just everyday activities in the classroom. Um, I could think of some students I have right now where they have certain strengths and definitely I like to encourage and promote those strengths with maybe one of their weaker ends and they just don't realize it. Um, for example, I have one student who is an artist, loves to draw um, when it comes to needing to write something, that student would rather draw it. And they do a very good job of explaining it. Even though it's a drawing and it's not physical writing, they still are able to understand the topic and the task at hand. And so that's the ultimate goal at that point, that they're understanding and able to explain in their own words. And so I have that student draw and then I scribe for the student of what they're telling me. And you can see, even though it's not their handwriting, it's still their words, it's still their voice. And so personalization is right there. I'm taking their ownership of their work and just assisting them along the way. And if a teacher's not available to scribe, there are tools out there such as Google um, voice to text that they could speak into the microphone on their computer or an iPad as well. And it can record what they're saying. And so again, their voice is being heard in their work and pair it with their drawing, um, taking that personalization to the next step and encouraging them to keep doing what they're doing. And then slowly try to scaffold in that writing piece as well. Um, once you have that encouragement and that investment in from the students, it's a lot easier to promote those non-preferred activities um, through experience. Um, another choice um, for personalization can be if you have a student who's really good at speaking but struggles with putting their words into writing is creating a video just like this. And again, you're hearing their voice, you're hearing their thoughts. Is it in the same format as 20 other students? No, but that is okay. They're still showing that they're comprehending what you're teaching them. And best of all, they're using their own voice. They're using their own skill set. And again, once that's used and that um, motivation and that self-esteem rises, then start to incorporate that non-preferred. Maybe we can start adding in some writing or having a script to read for their video. So again, personalization has so many opportunities, not just for general ed students, but most importantly, special ed students. Teachers, we can do it. 